You're listening to the Reds Podcast. This is Red Podcast number 44, and on this episode, Laurel and I take you behind the curtain to see inside Red Podcast. A lot of people want to start a podcast, but they don't know the work that is involved. We're relatively new, so we can talk to you about starting the podcast, building it up, and what it takes to do three or more episodes per week. That's coming up on this episode of the Red Podcast. This is the Red Podcast. Real entrepreneur development. Make more money, work less, and live a life of freedom. No BS advice that really works. Here's your hosts, David Hooper and Laurel Staples. Laurel, here we are, episode 44. Seems like yesterday we just started Red Podcast. We're relatively new, but we've got more episodes than most. And because of that, people have asked us how we're doing it. We have had a good run so far and a lot of great response from people. Great response. The numbers have been fantastic. We really appreciate you listening. We appreciate all the reviews that have come in. If you haven't reviewed us, iTunes is the place to do that. What is RED? RED stands for Real Entrepreneur Development. And who are we for, Laurel? If you are a coach, if you are a speaker, if you're an author, if you are trying to spread your message and you're trying to make a large income while doing it, we give you the tips, the tools, and the strategies to make it possible for you. We've had several people approach us, ask about our weekly process, not really setting up Red Podcast and how that started, but what we do every week how we get the content out, how we come up with the ideas, how we record. That's what this episode is about. I'm going to call it workflow. Workflow is a good topic because we're, we're calling this inside red. So it isn't going to be the setup process. It's not going to be about how we set up the website or how we pick the name or got the graphic or anything like that. It's going to be more about what we do every single week to get three episodes out of this podcast every week. Because a lot of people, they want to start podcasting. A lot of business owners are actually getting into podcasting as a way to spread their message because podcasting is hot now, but they don't really know what they're getting into as far as workload. So we wanted to talk about our experience on Red, and hopefully that'll help you if you are trying to create your podcast. People don't know what they're getting into. Here on Red, we try to keep episodes at 25 minutes, but there is more time, considerably more time, when it comes to planning, when it comes to editing, when it comes to the post-processing of the episode, and when it comes to promoting. We're going to go into that. And the first thing that we did, Laurel, before we ever hit the record button, episode brainstorm. Oh, yeah, this was big. We came up with about 50 to 100 different topic ideas that we could cover for each different episode. And that was a good, it was just a good brain dump to get it all out there. Yeah, we knew we were going to be doing about 150 episodes per year. And we wanted to have some kind of plan, one, to make sure that we weren't duplicating content. Also, though, looking at making sure that we didn't leave out content or just run out of stuff to talk about. So before we ever hit record, we came up with a good 50 to 100 ideas. But what we found since we've gotten into the process, and we'll talk about how we record here in just a second, but we base ideas for each episode on what is going on at the moment in our lives. But also now that we've gotten a pretty good listenership, we're getting people that are suggesting what we should talk about. We wanted to come up with topics for our episodes that talked about problems that people were actually dealing with. So it's been great to get questions from listeners because then we can address those topics and build on those as well. But we had to start somewhere. So we picked our avatar and then talked about ideas for episodes that would solve problems for our avatar. So that was a really great place for us to start. An avatar meaning the person listening, you listening. We have an idea of who you are or who we thought you would be, but that's changed as the podcast has gotten out there as we've interacted with people. We thought we knew what we were doing. We thought we had a plan, but like anything, you just start with a basic map and then you fix that as it happens. Also, another thing that we've run into, because I've been in business for myself 20 years, Laurel's been in 10, we're maybe at a different place 
than some of the listenership. So it's really, really good to keep in touch with an audience. I would say when it comes to episode brainstorm, really get in the thick of things, have feet on the street and ask people that will be listening to your podcast what it is that they want to know about because it might not be the same thing that you're dealing with on your day-to-day business based on where you are. Absolutely. And if you're doing interviews, you might not have to come up with that episode brainstorm. But still, it could be interesting because everybody is doing the same interviews with the same people on their podcast these days. If you're doing an interview show, maybe just coming up with still coming up with some ideas for your show. Maybe you could talk to the person that everybody else has interviewed, but talk to him or her about a different topic or a specific subject or something completely different. It'll also, if you're asking an expert questions, it'll help you figure out what to ask them, what your audience is interested in. So whether you're doing a podcast solo or whether you're interviewing people, it does help to come up with one, your avatar, who you're speaking to, and two, what are some topics that they are interested in listening to and hearing about. So episode planning, once we had the ideas down, what we do every week, we plan out the episodes. We have a list of four topics. We record four times a week, and each of those individual episodes we have to plan out more or less is an outline with bullet points. Right now, the work process is that I come up with those. I do all the outlining. Then I go over everything with Laurel. We have a podcast meeting. Podcast powwow. (laughs) Well, we come up, usually one or both of us comes up with some topics and then you outline them, David, into bullet points. How long would you say it takes you to do one outline or the four outlines? What kind of time are you spending on that? It doesn't take long because real entrepreneurs is what we are and this is real entrepreneur development. As I mentioned, I've been at this for 20 years. You've been at this for 10 and we're dealing with these things every day. So we've got ideas. We're also blogging. We think about these ideas all the time. It doesn't take very long, but when you and I get together, you'll have things that you want to add to it. It might be maybe every batch that we do, we record two episodes at a time. Maybe we brainstorm half an hour, 20, Mm -hmm. 30 minutes. I would say so. And then you write the bullet points and then we go over them to make sure we're on the same page. The idea for the episodes come first. I do a bullet point. We go over everything, make sure we have a nice flow. Then we hit the record button. And explain why we do four episodes a week when we only post three of them. Well, we do four episodes per week, two days per week, two episodes per day. That's how it's divided up. And we do four because sometimes things happen. Sometimes we go out of town. Sometimes Laurel, for example, was sick. And her voice was a little weird. That was awful. Coughing all the time. Yeah, that throws everything off. And sometimes we're just busy. We're working with other projects. So what we try to do is have a little bit of a buffer. If you're doing a podcast, you never want to make a decision or record something based out of desperation. You see that happen a lot with interview shows where somebody will flake out and you've got to come up with an interview really quickly. And the person that they bring in not so good, or they have to skip a week. And we didn't want to do that. We published three, but we record four. So we've got a little bit of a buffer and we've used that buffer. Oh yeah, absolutely. Especially when I was sick, I went out of town and then I was sick. So that was a really rough two weeks that we had there. For us to record those four times per week, those two sessions, we block out two hours to do two sessions. And sometimes it takes that long and sometimes it doesn't. Usually we do it from four to six in the afternoon. So four to six, we get together at four. We do an outline overview. We make sure we're on the same page, print everything off. Then about 90 minutes of recording, we record and then I'll do an introduction right away. Nothing is edited, just the basic recording within those couple of hours. Keep in mind, like today, David, we had five false starts with this episode. So we do block out those two hours so that we can really get into the groove with what we're doing. Usually, it's great to have two back to back. If you could do three back to back, that might even be better because usually the first one's a little bit more difficult because you're getting into the groove. And then the second one usually goes by really fast and we're in the groove. And if you did a third one, if you had time to do that, you're even more in the groove there. So putting them back to back really helps you manage your time a little bit better and knock them out quicker and easier. Yeah, there's false starts due to recording levels. Sometimes you're coming in off of a different meeting. 
you just don't have that energy that you want to bring to it. So rather than keep on going and try to make things work, we'll just be like, hey, stop it. And usually those f- false starts within, we get it within the first couple of minutes. Yeah, usually it's not five. Today was special. But we got it going. We <laughs> well, the problem going. is if you do too many of them, you end up getting frustrated. And there have been days, this is something worth talking about, Laurel. Another reason that we record four episodes a week, there's sometimes we just have to walk away from it. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> And we've learned that because you end up with something. We've recorded entire episodes, and this has happened maybe once or twice out of the 44 that we're on right now, where we are like, we've got to do that episode again. We just didn't hit the content. The outline didn't flow like we thought it was going to. Let's start all over again. Sometimes it's better to demolish a house and build one from scratch rather than trying to upgrade the one that you've got. It's been more than twice, but I'll I'll give you that one. (laughs) Well, we don't want to put out crap for lack of being able to say it better. So sometimes we're just not hitting it and yeah. we got to come out and do it later. And there's nothing wrong with that because we want to put out quality content. We want listeners to be engaged. And sometimes you just have to start it a couple times and do it over if it's not right. Now, do you want to do that on every episode? No, you have to get good fast to make this work, especially if you're coming out with content three times a week, five times a week, even once a week, you have to get good at doing it. But know that it's okay. You're going to mess up sometimes. It's not going to be perfect sometimes. And you have an opportunity to redo it. Let's talk about how we record. We are in the same house, the same location, but we record in a unique way, I would say. It's a lot like a lot of people would do if you are recording somebody from a different location, such as an interview show. And we record via Skype. Laurel and I both have Macintosh computers. We're in different rooms. I'm calling Laurel on Skype right now just as if she were somebody on the other side of the world. Yeah, I told that to my friend Erin the other day. And I was just explaining to her how you record upstairs and I record downstairs. And she goes, what do you mean? You all aren't in the same room? Because it obviously you would think we're in the same room in our house, but we're actually on two different floors right now. We record via call recorder. We also use Audacity. My side of the conversation is going direct into Audacity. Laurel's side on her computer is going direct into Audacity. We've actually got custom Blue Yeti mics because I had to drill through the stand to mount the popping screen to make sure that we don't pop. But more or less, it's just a basic mic into a computer. It goes into Audacity, and at the same time, we're recording on call recorder as a backup. That's more or less how we record though. This is how a lot of these interview podcasts are done. And we just took the same route for that. And even shows that have two hosts on there, like our shows, usually the hosts aren't in the same location. For instance, I listen to the Internet Business Mastery podcast, and one of those guys is in France, and one is not. So they're having a similar show with two hosts, but they're in completely different locations. We're closer than America and France, but we're still apart. I think it might be easier. And David, we've talked about this to actually be in the same room because then you can read facial cues and things like that, which we can't do on here. So you don't know when the other person's going to say something and when you're supposed to say something. So it could be easier to be in the same room, which we've been talking about. But right now it's working to be in separate rooms. It's absolutely easier to be in the same room. I've done things in the same room. I've done things via ISDN or via Skype in the different room. It gives me new respect for Terry Gross on NPR because a lot of her stuff is done who knows how far away the guests are. And they always seem to sound great. But yeah, you talk over people, and that's something that you need to work on in editing. There's a little bit of a delay. If you don't have the option of having somebody at your same location, this is a good way to do it, and that's how we're doing it now. And you want to make sure if you are doing an interview podcast and you're bringing other people onto your show, you want to make sure that they have some sort of quality mic. Don't ever let them record through their computer speakers or their computer microphone. They don't have to have a Blue Yeti. They don't have to have the whole system, but they need to have something on their end to make the quality of the sound good when you are doing that. So keep that in mind. We are fortunate enough that we both have the setup and can do it the way we want to do it. But when you bring other people in there, you got to have some rules and regulations on their audio. 
Blue Yeti is actually a pretty low-end microphone. A lot of people use the ATR2100 by Audio-Technica. A little more low-end than the Blue, maybe, but...